to the drum brokers behind the beats or whatever, a day in the life or me just fucking around on Marco Polo. Uh, shouts to the drum broker. They're definitely one of the, the best sites out there to get incredible material to make good music with. And yeah, today we're just gonna take a walk around my hood, end up in the studio, I'm gonna break down some beats. This is my deli, the illest deli in Fort Green. This is my office right here. I sit here every morning and I collect my thoughts. <laughs> this is some Brooklyn shit right here. I'm in front of Walters, 166 DeKalb Avenue. This is a staple in Fort Green. It's my homie Josh, he's the head chef. This is like my cheers in my neighborhood. Everybody knows Marco's name. <laughs> <laughs> this is a spot to eat in Fort Green. This is actually a false representation of my life because it's showing me walking. 14 years ago I moved to New York and I lived in Queens and then I moved to this neighborhood. I've been here ever since and it's, as you can tell, it's, it's pretty. Basically, in high school, I started listening to hip hop uh, in Toronto, and then it got to the point where I wanted to, to do more than just listen. And then I knew right away I had to move to New York. Like there wasn't no staying in Toronto back then. It was a dope scene, but it was really, it was really underground. I started interning at a studio called the Cutting Room, and that's where I met a lot of people. They started checking for my beats, and that's you know when I, I realized I could possibly do this as a career, and I started doing production full time. You know, for people like. Pumpkinhead, you know, rest in peace Pumpkinhead, we did a whole album together called Orange Moon Over Brooklyn. That was like the first project that I produced top to bottom except for one joint. At the Cutting Room I also met Master Ace. He really helped change my career. I started DJing for him, doing joints with him and you know, I have the joint with Ace called Nostalgia, which to this day, I'm pretty sure most people, if they've heard of me in Underground, it's because of that song. A lot of my early influences are, you know, a lot of the classic dudes. Uh, the RZA, DJ Premier, Large Professor, P Rock, the Beat Nuts, the Beat Miners, uh, Q Tip. You know, my dad bought Tribe's first album before I even owned a hip hop album because he liked Benita Applebaum. Basically, my love for the for the hip hop production is what brought me to New York, and I decided to, that I wanted to do this. I was so intrigued by the sounds, like where how where are these sounds coming from? You know, then I learned it's a samples and records and digging, and then it just it just escalated from there. I just wanted to learn everything. When I first moved to New York and like being in videos, it's like awkward white dude from out of town trying to fit in the hip hop, doing rap hands and videos. It's like, nope. I'm in my 30s now, it's not me. I'm just here trying to make music. I'm a, I'm an idiot and a, I like to joke, and I'm comfortable with that. I'm very comfortable with that. I don't know what to do with my hands. Enough with all this life story shit, let's go make beats, that's what we're here for. In the new lab, people will probably remember the old messed up me hunching over on a crazy chair, but I got a spruce up, got my life together. Um, it's just me fucking around right now. What I was just doing there is using uh, one of my new favorite things in life. Uh, an arpeggiator. You know, using contact and complete, I, people that follow my production know I'm a huge fan of that sound library. Beat making is like going to school for me. It's like, it's a never ending class. So every day I come in here, I try and learn new shit. You know, back in the early days of, of hip hop production, people used what they had. Whatever they had, they used it. If it was just vinyl and a sampler with like three seconds, that's what they use because that's what they have. So now we have all this shit, so of course, gonna use that shit, you know what I'm saying? But with keeping the spirit of vinyl, um, because for me, this is where it all starts, is you know the sounds we get off this. So basically that's what I'm trying to do all the time, is, is make something in here that sounds like this. Simple concept to talk about, but actually more difficult to execute. So one of the things I wanna talk about today is gonna be a bunch of shit, but um, you know, I recently had the opportunity to do some more work uh, with the Brooklyn Nets. So they approached me for this season to do a full song with an MC, uh, who I hollered at Torre, because that's my dude. And uh, so we had to make a song, and I wanted to incorporate some of the horns from the theme song, but with a new twist. Now working in corporate world, you know they ain't trying to hear nothing about uncleared samples, so uh, I had the opportunity to actually test out <coughs> some new sounds that I've been designing with two very talented people. The first one being my dude J-Zone. Shouts to J-Zone and the breaks that he does. You can cop those on Drum Broker. I think I got some of it here.
But it's crazy, I got the call to do this beat and I was in Portugal on vacation and I had an MPC out there. So I was like, damn, how am I gonna not be in my studio and make, you know, something sample free, but still feels like a Marco Polo beat. So this is the original break from my new drum break series that J-Zone played. Shit is super hard. Whew. I've also been in the studio with my man Jeremy Page, AKA White Wizard, and um, we've been making a lot of music that for me to sample and ultimately for me to share with people and sell one day too, but I had a bunch of uh, joints. Shit is mean. So me and Jeremy came up with that. He's another incredible musician who just knows how to make shit sound right. I had to make it up tempo. It's like 94.2 BPM, which in new rap world is unheard of because everything is like 60 BPM, but I still like the hype shit. Um, and you know, with theme songs and stuff like that, you want it to be high energy. So that's what I wanted to make. Something that felt Brooklyn, something that was high energy. So I arranged the samples like this. And then I had the change up right here. I got the original music, but then I also have all the stems of all the individual sounds that are in here so I can isolate things. But, but you know, usually how I do my bass lines is I put them on 16 levels. And I get my bass sounds, a lot of them from contact. I used to get them from records and I still do sometimes. But all you need is one open bass sound. And sometimes too, you can catch bass sounds from songs that you sample. Cause you could just find where the bass plays open without drums. And even if there's music on it, producers, even if there's like pianos and keys on it, once you filter it down, you're just gonna get the low end anyways, and it actually gonna be the same bass in the actual song, so it's gonna sit really well if you're chopping up samples. You can kill the lows a little bit with, you know, anything with EQ. Especially with a bass heavy sample, and the more lows you, you kill in the sample, it's more room for your bass note to really fucking cut through. This is basic shit for people. I'm just explaining it because people ask me all the time. Uh, so that's just a little tip when it comes to bass lines. It was a happy medium of making a Marco Polo beat for, you know, someone that didn't want me to use samples. It still sounds grimy. The, the, these J-Zone drums for my kit are crazy. They smack. And you can't beat break beats, you know? People, if you're insecure about your drum programming skills, loop breaks. <laughs> let, let, let a real drummer find a rhythm for you until you get confident enough to chop up shit and make it swing like, you know, a natural drummer does. It's hard to recreate that shit, but that's what separates the men from the boys with hip-hop production is, is being able to chop up drums and making them swing in a certain way and the air and the natural humanism. So sometimes I loop, you know, I loop drums, it's easier and it feels good and I do it. Sometimes I chop. For this one, I just looped the shit because it felt right. So basically I had to sample the main one. So that was the heart of the beat. So now I'm like, how am I going to get the horns from the Brooklyn Nets theme to kind of be in this beat? So it's like a new song, but you hear the horns and you're like, oh, it's the Brooklyn Nets shit. So it was a perfect example. So I think the original... So you can see the, the tuning was completely different. And basically guys, I didn't hear the horns and know that they would work with that sample. I had to put, put them into a program or even into the MPC and kind of mess with the tuning. I 
And I literally just fucked around with it and kept hitting it until until the tuning was right. And that's what it takes sometimes is just like, don't think. Just if you hear an open sound that you want to try and a beat, put it in the MPC and try and match the tuning. And this is the difficult part is you can't really teach, you know, it doesn't matter what the note and what key is in. You could pitch it up or down. If it's if it feels right and in tune with the beat, you do it. Like, you got to trust your ears. You really can't teach that type of shit. Also, another thing is producers ask me about... Um, I saw on my Facebook, music theory, piano playing, keyboards, tuning. Yo, I don't know none of that shit. <laughs> but I just use my ears, man. I use technology. There's so there's no excuses anymore. There's so many programs that do it for you. And somebody asked me, yo, you're doing a remix, and the remix has singing in it. How do you find something that's in tune? Yo, there's so many websites on the net where you can like figure out the keys of a song and the chord of a song. It's not always accurate, but at least it gives you a starting point. Yo, I got shit on my phone. There's a program, I don't even care, I'll, I'll tell you the name of it. It's called Pro Chords, which allows me to, you know, come up with chord progressions. And then it exports, like, I have all these chords here. Hold on a second, put the volume up. You can kind of just like pick chords and assemble them. And then this shit will actually export what I do as a MIDI file and then you can import it. It's wild. I don't know shit about music theory, man. I'll be on YouTube looking at people hit the keys on the piano and I literally write them down. Okay, he pressed those five. Bam, I press them. Then I fit and then, you know, and then a program like this will tell you, okay, if you have G minor ninth, what's a chord that would go after that? And these programs will tell you these 17 chords make sense musically. Yeah, it's kind of cheating, but I don't give a fuck about all that. Whatever makes the hottest music and makes something feel good, you know. So when I have a remix with a singing hook, I'll start with the singing hook and I'll just play keys under it until I feel that I'm in the right chord progression and then I'll build the beat that way. Yeah, man. It's a whole new world out there. And there's a lot of people giving you giving you sounds now. If, you have, if you're a producer and you have three kids and a mortgage and a wife and you can't go dig in every weekend because that shit takes time, it's much easier than it used to be because now you can literally go on the internet and cop like amazing sounds and bang out beats because at the end of the day that's what it's about is the output the product and making music for me my job is to make music and that's what i want to really spend my time on i love record collecting just because i love music and i'm always going to do that i'm always going to dig it puts me in a peaceful place that's one of my favorite things to do but i made this my career so i gotta make music <laughs> that's that Let's fucking just make a beat, let's do it. It might be whack, but let's see. I think that's like 84 BPM. or people that don't know about tuning or music theory. I'm one of those people, you see that the, the keys are moving. So you know on a chord, all these keys are in tune with it. So you can go and hit any of those notes when you're making your bass lines and know that those bass notes on a keyboard are in tune with that chord. So now you don't even have to know, just look at shit. I just fuck around until I hear the right notes, so I know the change up is. I feel like getting reckless, so I'm gonna take a Motown a cappella and see if I can tune it to this beat. I'm gonna take something really reckless that I'll never be able to clear in a million years. Oh, so wonderful, being near you 
is all that I'm living for. Saying you show me more kindness. So basically, the hard part comes now, where there's parts of his vocals that are in tune, but they're off time. So I gotta chop it up and just see what the fuck happens. See what else I can take. Oh. 